So, Julian Matthews is an emerging poet, I think he's emerged, from Malaysia of mixed race minority who is published in the American Journal of Poetry, Beltway Poetry Quarterly and Borderless Journal, among others. He stumbled onto poetry by accident five years ago at a writing workshop. That sounds a bit deliberate to me. If you're at a writing workshop, you're going to come, you're going to write. <laughs> Sorry about this, Julian. I don't normally heckle people's bios. Yes, I do. <laughs> that happy accident has turned into a rabid compulsion. No way you feel. He's still extricating himself from the crash. Welcome to his recovery. If you wish to support him, we'll... I'm sure he or we will pop his links in and anything that you pay to find us tonight will also be sent over to Julian. As, uh, we don't get any fee. We don't get any funding. So it all comes from you being you generous, nice people. Okay, so now we have Julian Matthews. Do you need Hi. to do anything to screen share tonight, Julian? Uh, I don't think so. Thank you. Maybe later. Maybe the last one. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, okay. So the first one is called uh, How Many Ways Can I Prove to You I'm Not a Robot? So the internet wants me to prove that I'm not a robot again. It gives me a set of square options and asks me to please click on image that contains a bicycle. So I spot a bicycle, click another bicycle, click, wait, there's only one wheel in here. Is that a unicycle? But it says specifically bicycle, not unicycle, not tricycle, not monocycle. I'm a detail oriented man, I'm very specific about getting clear, specific, unambiguous instructions which demand clear, specific, unambiguous replies. But that image only has one wheel. And wait, the other one I clicked on had two bicycles. Bicycles, plural. The question says click on bicycle, singular. Are these trick questions? I'm wary of trick questions. So I click verify and the page refreshes. I fail the test. But phew, it gives me a second chance. Now it says click on image that has traffic light in it. I'm not a robot. I know a traffic light when I see one. But wait, first, bicycles and now traffic lights. Was this test designed by someone from the road transport department? I haven't been so stressed since my driving test years ago. And back then, I was more stressed about parallel parking. Hmm, traffic light, click, traffic light, click. Wait, is the traffic light pole considered part of the overhead traffic light? I suppose so. Click, click, click. Wait, is the shadow of the overhead traffic light on the road considered traffic light? Well, there would be no shadow if there was no traffic light. Is this an existential test, damn it? This is so vague. I'm a detail-oriented man. I'm very specific about getting clear, unambiguous instructions to demand clear, specific, unambiguous answers. I click verify and get kicked out, damn it. I just realized I was kicked out by a robot deciding whether I am a robot or not. How ironic, how judgy. How utterly ridiculous. The fact that I flunked out in your test, you silly reject robot, is proof enough that I am human after all. Hey robot, if you gave me pictures of nine potential prime ministers and asked me to click on which candidate can actually do the job, I would click skip and move on. I also know what a bicycle is, you silly robot. I not only know how to identify a bicycle, I know how to ride one as well. Can you? And I can identify a traffic light when I see one. I know red means stop, green means go, and amber means go faster. That's my choice. That's my prerogative. That's being human, silly robot. Being human is about taking risks. Being human is about making decisions, good or bad. Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we run a red light and cause accidents. Sometimes we hurt ourselves. Sometimes we hurt others. Sometimes we fall off our bicycles and scrape our knee and and it bleeds and, and it hurts. Sometimes we ride our bicycles home in the rain. Sometimes we ride so hard, we can't tell whether it's raindrops or teardrops on our cheeks. That's being human, silly robot. 
but you'll never know. You can't even give clear, specific, unambiguous instructions that demand clear, specific, unambiguous answers. I refresh the page and it says, you have reached your verification limit for today. Please try again in 24 hours. I get off the internet and gripe to my wife about the robot. She says she's just discovered that she's been driving around for the last three months with an expired driving license and she can't renew it online. I must drive her to the office next week to renew it. I'm a detail-oriented man. I'm very specific about getting clear, specific, unambiguous instructions. I nod approvingly. I am not a robot after all. At least someone appreciates this humor. I touch my face to wipe away the tear that isn't there. Thank you. I just have to change my background for this. So I'm from Malaysia. Thanks for your attendance. Uh, this is my first feature at this uh, open mic. Um, so in Malaysia, we have three main races. They usually uh, categorize as Malay, Chinese, or Indian. And the rest of us, mixed race or indigenous race or native race or other categories are categorized as um, other, other, or in Malay, it's lying, lying. So uh, I wrote a poem about that. Other, lying, lying. As a schoolboy, I was always asked what mix I was, as if I were ingredients to make a cake by, as if I were eggs that needed to be separated into yellows and whites for better or worse. Then I would say I'm half baked or stengah masa, like the two half boiled eggs my Anglophile Holy Ceylonese father ate ritually every morning, made faithfully by his Chinese born Indian adopted wife and served with white salt, black pepper, and brown toast, white, yellow, brown, or black. Color, mix, race, boxes to tick. Why didn't we have more choices like the Luna 12 color pencil boxes we had or the 64 color boxes that my rich friends had that I so envied? Cause I was told I was not Malay, Chinese, nor Indian. And even though the teacher insisted Ceylonese should be classified under Indian, I refused to play the game. And why was my mother's composition not in the equation? When it comes to race, Chegu, jangan main main. Teacher, don't play, play. I would rather be tagged line, line, the other. Not as a badge of shame, but to show that under this prick skin, we are same, same. After all, isn't line, line just an anagram for nail, nail, like the two in the cross? I'd rather be a martyr than for all those who are lost. And if they crucified me for it, maybe you'd start a religion that a billion others profess to. And the line line gospels would not be written only by four men. It would have a billion godless spells written by every man, woman, and every gender in between. Every page, verse, and chapter would not just be in black ink on white paper, but a psychedelic rainbow reflecting nothing anyone has ever heard or seen before. We are all from the same DNA, so why do you label me as another? Do our mothers and fathers deserve to be called others? I could call you sister or brother or any pronoun you wish to be. You see, it really doesn't matter to me. I only see what I see. Do you see me too? So tell me again, what color are your fears? What race are your tears? What religion is your blood? What language are your hopes? What ancestry, breeding, caste, descent, extraction, pedigree, parentage, background status do I have to be? call you my friend? And what will it take for you to identify me as human? Because when they made lion lion, they didn't just break the mold, they broke the yolk and mixed in white salt and black pepper and dipped brown toast in it. And it was whole meal, fully organic, naturally delicious. Take it or leaven it. We may decline to be defined by tiny boxes you tick on, and we may pay the price because we don't conform, but at least we know we are our own. Yes, I am the other. We are all others. Instead of other, 
Can't you just reach out, shake my hand, and call me brother? End poem, thank you. Um, let me change the background again. Ah. So this is called uh, Second Skin. Everything has a skin. The down on a hatchling, the insides of bedding. Winter is just another covering. A new fresh dressing for a scorched earth, a battle scarred forest, husk trees, a brief healing to melt away into green. Everything has a peel, a rind, a skin. Oranges, bananas, coconuts, even the groundnut and the peanut within. A sneak molts every month or two. A swan replaces all 25,000 feathers every summer. The hibernating bear in a cave always comes back hungrier. Everything has a mask, a coat, a shell, the forest an overstory, the tree a bark, the book a cover. Humans shed their entire outer layer every two to four weeks, a thousand skins in an average lifetime. Each a story to tell maybe, some skins are too thin. I once saw kids and grown adults at a mall in cosplay, trapsing around in colorful wigs, fierce makeup and outlandish outfits, anime and manga characters, unfamiliar to me, having fun being unrecognizable, yet recognized in disguise, if only for a day. We all have the capacity to reinvent, to act, to adopt a persona. They say to fake it until you make it, but all sequent lives have consequences. Everything has a skin. Sometimes we adapt the role so well we become the other. The salesman imbibing his own snake oil, the charmer hypnotized by her own spell. Being professional may mean swallowing our true amateur, authentic artistic selves, defiling haloed ground for a hollow victory, the end justifying the meanness. Everything has a skin, some thicker within. It's inherent in our dual nature, I suppose, to be both poison and elixir, to alleviate and induce suffering, the exquisite curved tip of a scorpion sting. Everything, everyone has a second skin. Yours may be warm, soft and tender, mine colder, crustier. I'm two thirds of the way in, some rings yet to encircle me, some pages yet to be writ. Your chapter is only beginning, your core still terraforming, your edges yet to flake off. Everything has a skin, even snow changes on its journey from cloud to earth. Water vapor attaches to every hurtling icy drop. It can't choose where it falls, where it's been. But when you magnify, home in, peer closely enough, every snowflake is a six-pronged crystal. No two ever alike, they say. You never know from its coming where it's going. A second skin can also be a thing of beauty, just waiting to be found, just wanting to be seen. Everything has a second skin. Everything. Thank you. Um, I lost a uncle just a couple of days ago. He was 75. It was his birthday. Um, so this is called, uh, he was the last uncle on both sides of my family. He was the, married to the youngest aunt on my father's side. This is called Black Shirt. I probably bought it decades ago as formal wear for functions and night events. When matched with a black jacket, it didn't require the constriction of a tie. They added that the vertical white stripes would make me look thinner in old age. But today I lifted off the rack with weighted heaviness again. 
I put it on, look heavenward and sigh, like lowering a flag to half mass. Time's unforgiving arc eventually bends toward more funerals than weddings. Amid the pandemic, the informality on Zoom didn't require its service, so it hung in the wardrobe patiently waiting like a mother waits a wayward son to come home, like a mother ready to clothe you in a warm embrace yet button you up in her grace, like a mother ever ready to shoulder your every despair yet straighten your collar of its tardiness and tuck in self-control in your pants. Like a mother sneakily slipping you in sleeves of spirituality and filling a pocket of gratitude just over your heart. I check myself in the mirror under the light and I see that the shirt has faded. Its midnight matte has given into a shade of pale, almost ashen gray. At the funeral, I note the traditional black at this memorials is no longer a must these days. Or perhaps some people just didn't get the memo. Or maybe I too should look with renewed eyes at death and blackness as being mutually exclusive. That all these endings can be bright new beginnings that I should just stop picking at the stitches of this grief and not let the sadness crease the remaining fading fabric of our lives. Or maybe I should just go out and buy a new shirt. Thank you. And the last poem is called Exclamation. And uh, I just need to uh, share screen for a sec. Should we settle? Um, I had a strange phenomenon in my bedroom in which um, light comes through the curtains and uh, sometimes it hits the wardrobe on the opposite side and it makes a perfect exclamation point. Let me uh, share screen and how it looks like. So yeah, that's it. So this is called exclamation and it's my last poem for the day. Thank you for attending this event. I know some of you have just come here to support me and I really, really appreciate that. And thank you for the poems and the poets who came before me and the, who came after me. And thank you, thank you to the host and Atkins and Rafe Boylan. Um, so this is called uh, exclamation. Our bedroom window faces east. Once too early in the morning on a Sunday, no less, my eyes hooded like an owl's, probably hung over from the previous night of imbibing. I lay there too lazy to get out of bed and spied across me a perfect exclamation point on the wardrobe. I blinked uncertain whether I was still in dreamland. There was a crack between the curtains that allowed a sliver of sunlight to drizzle in. It stood straight and tall, unwavering and strong. No click of the switch, no lightsaber bzzz on. No fireside hiss or crackle to announce its arrival. It appeared silently, magically, and fully formed. As a former journalist, we rarely, if ever, used exclamation points in the news. In fiction and poetry, we use it to interject, to bring attention to a word, sentence, or a whole scene or the end of an expletive, or a yell of fear, or a shriek of delight. But this was different. It was pure light, not the usual black on white paper. It was like something alien, outworldly, and it's hard not to endow it with divinity, to think the sun, our closest star, this constant in our lives, our generous celestial neighbor, our brotherly big ball of gas and plasma in our galaxy, provider of glorious welcome, morning hellos and multi-hued brushstroke skies on day's end. And we say it rises and sets daily as if it slept all night, even though it's been always up and on for 4.6 billion years. This friendly fire, I say friendly as long as it keeps social distancing for 93 million miles. This flickering circle behind the misdirecting magician moon in every show-stopping eclipse long before the viral newcomer stole its crown in the noun corona. This orb of omnipotent life chose my window 
my room to grace this shaded, unlit man with its unique pinpoint laser light show just for me. Indeed, exclamation point. Or at least I'd like to believe so. In the early days when the luminescent punctuation made its appearance and I was up to witness it, I saw it as a sign, a bright call to arms, a disarming alarm, a gentle, glowing, glaring order to get out of bed, puny human. Carpe diem, seize the day. Every time it showed up, I was moved to move. It was a motivating slice of solar magnificence and never lost its luster for me. But lately, I just noticed it's been missing, gone. Maybe an adjustment in the curtains or perhaps the Earth's axis moved a little, a minuscule shift in the astronomical heavens and it stopped coming. Perhaps it recognizes that it no longer needed its warm wake-up call anymore, as if to say, my work here is done. Maybe it just got tired of waiting for me to document it in a poem. Maybe it knows, like my editor of old, that the words alone are enough. No exclaiming needed. Perhaps the divine message is not to keep questioning my existence, doubting my relevance, but to just show up, be present, and beam like an exclamation point wherever I am, and to let a little starlight inside guide my way. Thank you so much. That was a brilliant yeah. Thank you very, very much, Julian. Excellent. If everybody would like to give Julian a round of applause, I'm sure you'd appreciate that. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I've dropped his link in the chat, so I'm sure he'd appreciate it even more if you pipe out some... Uh, Can I show that? Yeah, some spendable stuff. Okay. Uh, right, we're going to take a, a break now, about 10 minutes or so. Um, 